Welcome everyone to a brand new video. This is very different from what I usually do. But if you guys remember, there was an acclaim series that I did a while back called What If Dragon Ball Was An MCU Movie. People love that series. And I thought, why not branch out and do something like that for a different anime? I know I don't usually cover many more anime aside from Dragon Ball, but there's a lot of JoJo hype going around lately. So, why not? This video was done in collaboration with Professor Chimp. An awesome guy that knows a lot about Jojo. He has been my co-writer through this and we planned a lot of this out together. It's been so much fun and a lot of credit goes to him. Anyways, I hope you enjoy as we begin with the Marvel Cinematic Universe Phase 1. Though Iron Man is the first movie in the series, the second one is Jojo's Bizarre Adventure, Phantom Blood. The main plot of Phantom Blood mostly remains the same. Dio and Jonathan become brothers in 1881. Dio is a dick. Jonathan stops Dio from killing his dad with poison in 1888 with help of Speedwagon. Dio is a sore loser. Turns into a vampire, Dio kills Jonathan's dad in the old-fashioned way. He survives getting burned alive and Jonathan is trained by William Zeppeli to become a Hamon user. Now, this should all be familiar to Jojo fans so far, but the first major change comes when Dio is creating his undead army. Rather than only attacking small villages in London, Dio decides to conduct a scheme to increase his army's size by attacking numerous villages across Europe instead of just London. He amasses a large number of undead in his plan to take over the world. As Dio travels through Europe, Jonathan, Zeppeli, and Speedwagon follow close behind him. They witness the atrocities Dio has committed in his ruthless campaign as villages are left utterly abandoned and decimated. While traveling through Germany, the heroes are led to a village by a little boy named Johann Schmidt. However, upon arriving at the village, it is revealed to be a trap. They are ambushed by the undead. Before they can start the fight, Will gives Jonathan a glass filled with wine and orders him not to spill it. Wacky shenanigans ensue, and after defeating the undead horde with the help of Speedwagon, they encounter Dio, with Jonathan learning more about Hamon, something that will come back later in the MCU. Before they fight Dio, however, he summons one of his two loyal generals, Brufort. Zeppeli tells Jonathan that Brufort is his first major test. If he cannot defeat him, then he has no hope of defeating Dio. Jonathan fights Brufort as Zeppeli fights Dio. They exchange dialogue about what honor truly means as Dio taunts Zeppeli for being so narrow-minded and weak. Jonathan manages to defeat Brufort, although Dio manages to hold off Zeppeli for long enough to escape. As Brufort dies, he acknowledges Jonathan as a true warrior, gifting him his sword, Luck. Jojo then decides to rename the blade Luck. With Dio's disappearance, the heroes try to comfort the boy. Johan claims that he was under hypnosis after seeing Dio, and he thanks the heroes for saving him, although he's saddened by the death of his parents and his village. Jonathan believes him, but Speedwagon remains rather skeptical. He has seen the same deceitful snake eyes he saw on Dio in the boy's eyes. The heroes drop off Johan at a nearby orphanage as they continue their journey. Eventually, they catch up to Dio in Transylvania, where they locate him inside an enormous castle, which once belonged to Vlad the Impaler. After reuniting with Zeppeli's master, Tom Petty, and his commanders, Dyer and Straitzo, the heroes launch a raid to the castle. Before it occurs, however, Tom Petty comforts Zeppeli, telling him that this castle and Jonathan reminds him of the prophecy he once made decades ago. In his prophecy, he saw Zeppeli die in the dungeon in order to unleash the lions from this chain. Will reassures his master that he is prepared to die ever since he found the stone mask. He has made peace with it. And if death can assure the mass destruction, then so be it. The heroes climb through several floors when the second and strongest of Dio's generals, Tarkas, appears. He crushes the floor beneath them with his brutish strength, which causes the heroes to be sent to different floors and rooms. Several unique undead monsters, Doobie, Jack the Ripper, Paige, Jones, etc., are summoned and ordered to find and kill the intruders. As Tarkas fights the injured Jonathan and Seppli in the torture chambers, Straitso and Tom Petty fight off several undead dead zombies, while Speedwagon and the wounded Dyer must fend off Jack the Ripper. Although they are originally chased at first, Speedwagon and Dyer manage to turn the tables on Jack, using a cunning strategy to defeat and kill the undead serial killer. Jonathan and Zeppeli aren't doing so well. Trapped in chains, Jonathan is unable to fight at his best, and Zeppeli isn't strong enough to defeat Tarkas. Straight so Tom Petty, Speedwagon and Dyer arrive at the dungeon, but the untimely arrival of more undead zombies and Doobie prevent them from helping. Zeppeli dies trying to save Jonathan. 
but before he dies, Zeppeli passes on all of his Hamon energy to him. With this new strength and determination, Jonathan breaks free from the chains and defeats Tarkus. The heroes regroup and mourn the loss of Zeppeli, as Speedwagon goes to pick up Zeppeli's hat. Doobie appears from the darkness to attack, but Jonathan manages to kill him with a single attack. Hey kids, don't go away! We'll be right back! Hey everyone, I hope you're enjoying the video thus far. If you like this sort of content, want to see more and support the channel, then consider becoming a Patreon. There, you can help support the channel through various tiers while getting some perks of your own. As a Patreon, you will be helping improve the videos, get them out faster, fund the awesome thumbnails, editing, and much more. Overall, this is the best way to ensure that I can keep providing you guys with awesome Dragon Ball content. Plus, you get some neat perks, like an extra discussion video every other week, early access to videos such as this one, and behind the scenes content. So be sure to go to patreon.com forward slash smugstick and consider supporting the channel. Thank you to all the current patrons for your support, and let's get back into the story. And now back to our show! Heroes make it to the top floor, where they finally encounter Dio. Dyer, Straitso, and Tom Petty attack, but they are no match. Dyer is killed, while Tom Petty and Straitso are heavily damaged. Jonathan steps up to fight Dio, who states that he has chosen this castle to be the beginning of the ascension of Dio, the king of vampires and ruler of the world. Jonathan is eventually able to use his sword and his Hamon to defeat Dio, cutting off his head and seemingly killing him. However, Dio's head is recovered by an unknown figure. The heroes celebrate as they destroy the stone mask and bury Zeppelin in Italy. Tom Petty and Straits are returned to the monastery in Tibet. Jonathan and Speedwagon go to London, where Jojo marries Irina Pendleton his childhood love, who was set up earlier in the movie, perhaps in the opening credits. And no, the dog probably doesn't die in this one. For their honeymoon, the two board a cruise, but during it, Jojo and Arena are led into the engine room during a zombie attack, where they encounter Dio. Dio manages to critically injure Jojo with his ripper stinging eyes, but Jonathan manages to use his Hamon to hit Dio's masked assistant, who then causes a chain of events that sets the ship on fire. Jonathan dies holding Dio's head in his arms as the ship explodes. Irina manages to survive with his baby girl and a little boy by hiding inside of Dio's coffin. In the end credits, after Irina and the children are rescued by sailors, the young boy is taken back to his home country of Germany. It is then revealed that the little boy is none other than Johann Schmidt, pleased to see that both Dio and Jonathan are dead. He thinks out loud that he should thank Dio for opening his eyes and showing him how beautiful cruelty can be. One day, all of Europe, and eventually the world, will belong to him. He looks at himself in the mirror as a red light illuminates his face. In the post credit scene, Dio's coffin is tossed into the ocean floor. When the coffin hits the floor, it begins to shake as several menacing kanji appear around the coffin. The screen fades to black, with the only words being, the Joestar bloodline will return. This leads us into Captain America. Battle Tendencies. And strap in, because this one is a long one, but it's very fun. The movie begins in 1920s Brooklyn, New York, with two kids, Bucky and Steve, saving another kid named Smokey from being beat up. Just when it looks like Steve and Bucky are about to get beat up themselves, the bullies suddenly get taken out by a new kid with a loud, rambunctious personality. After the bullies leave, Steve and Bucky thank the kid, as he introduces himself as Joseph Joestar. From then on, Steve, Bucky, and Joseph become best friends. Joseph lived with his grandmother, Irina. Over the years, Joseph and Bucky grow into large, strong men, while Steve remains as frail as ever. In 1942, during the height of World War II, a platoon of Hydra soldiers led by the Red Skull attempted to steal an ancient artifact known as the Red Stone of Asia from a monastery in Naples, Italy. However, after killing several Hamon users and entering the monastery, they discover the stone is missing. Red Skull realizes that Italy's Ripple Master had anticipated his arrival and set them up. Red Skull is furious as he orders his men to locate the stone at all costs. After years of studying vampirism, the stone mask, and the occult, Red Skull uncovers ancient Aztec ruins which reveal the key to true power. When a stone mask and the Red Stone of Asia are put together, they grant the wearer unlimited power. The mask was created to harness the stone's power, similarly to Loki's scepter. Red Skull was inspired by the vampire Dio Brando to achieve power by any means necessary and 
dominate the world. In America, at the Stark and Speedwagon exhibition, Bucky informs his friends that he enlisted in the US Army, while Joseph decides that he'll avoid the draft at all costs. Since he thinks the war is a drag, Steve sees Joseph as a coward. Overhearing Roger's conversation with Barnes and Joseph, Dr. Abram allows Rogers to enlist. After showing off his heroism and exceptional bravery during basic training, Steve is recruited to be the US's first super soldier. During the super soldier procedure, Speedwagon, as a key financier of the project, is in attendance along with the SSR agent Peggy Carter. Arkenstein subjects Rogers to the super soldier treatment, injecting him with a special serum and dosing him with Vita rays, enhancing radiation rays, which are the result of decades of research on the ancient Tibetan ability known as Ripple. The procedure is a success, and Steve gains incredible power. Unfortunately, the doctor is killed afterwards. Steve chases down the assassin into New York City, where he is stripped by Joseph, who was out on a date. Steve launched at him, grabbing him by the collar. Joseph can't believe it, but it really was Steve. There was no time to ask about this. The assassin throws a car at the pair, which they barely manage to avoid. Steve asks him who he is, but Joseph answers that question for him. That was Straight So. He sees Straight So's fangs and lack of breath as he deduces that he must be a vampire now. Steve calls him crazy, but Straight So merely chuckles, saying that it doesn't matter if he knows what he really is. He accomplished his mission to kill the doctor, and he'll make his superiors proud when they find out he killed the American super soldier too. Joseph and Steve battle Straight So across New York City as Steve gets used to his new abilities. Joseph reveals his tactical genius along with mysterious Hamon abilities, which surprised Steve. He never knew he could do that. Straight So finally recognizes Joseph as the descendant of Jonathan Joestar and decides that he must die too before he becomes a threat to Hydra. Joseph asks him why he chose to be a vampire, as Straight So simply says that he'd rather be young forever than to die as an old man. He went as far as to swear loyalty to Hydra just to become a vampire. Steve and Joseph work together in a combo attack, hitting Straight So with a trash can lid, charged full of Hamon. Before Straight So is destroyed by it, he informs Joseph and Steve that this is only the beginning of Hydra's ascension. Cut one head off, and another will take its place. He's engulfed in flames. With the doctor dead, his super soldier formula is lost. And Steve is sent on various missions as the colorful custom hero Captain America, promoting war bonds. Meanwhile, Joseph is asked by the government and Peggy Carter to join the war effort against the Germans. But Joseph refuses. He just wants to live life by his own rules, not someone else's. A year passes. In 1943, Speedwagon and Agent Carter receive intel that Hydra had uncovered something incredible in Italy, a powerful artifact that could change the tide of the war. Not only that, it appears that Hydra has begun using the stone mask to create their own army of the undead. Speedwagon and Carter contact Joseph in New York City, requesting him personally. Jojo argues at first, saying that he still isn't interested in fighting, but then a devious smile forms on his face. He accepts, but only on the condition that Peggy goes on a date with him. She reluctantly accepts, as Joseph travels to Italy. Joseph and Peggy arrive in the soldier camp, where, by coincidence, Steve is currently visiting as part of his Captain America show. Joseph catches up with Steve, as he teases him for being a poster boy for the US government. Later that day, Joseph is briefed on the mission. He will infiltrate the Roman Colosseum, uncover exactly what Hydra has discovered, and rescue Sergeant James Bucky Barnes and his team, the Howling Commandos. They were the first ones to be sent there to investigate. Joseph immediately agrees to the mission, after hearing that his friend Bucky is in danger. Unbeknownst to everyone, Steve was listening in to the meeting from outside the tent. Peggy assigns Joseph a partner, a fellow Hamon user known as Caesar Zeppelin. Caesar thinks that Joseph is a boastful idiot, while Joseph thinks he's just a prideful pretty boy. The two men go off to Rome for their mission with an escort truck. However, Steve manages to sneak into the back of the truck and abandons the camp. When they arrive at the Colosseum, Joseph dresses in drag and tries to trick the guards, but it doesn't work. He just knocks them out instead. Inside, Joseph and Caesar find German soldiers carrying equipment such as giant UV lights into the lower levels of the Colosseum. As they attempt to sneak in, they are spotted by Hydra agents, one named Rudolf von Stroheim. With a firefight ensuing, during the battle, Joseph is nearly shot by Stroheim when he is suddenly saved by the untimely arrival of Captain America. 
Cap, Joseph and Caesar fight off the Nazi soldiers and the Hydra soldiers who are revealed to be undead. Stroheim is in utter shock to see the undead as well. They were his soldiers and now they're zombified freaks. He escapes from the battle, heading into the lower levels to warn their superiors. Joseph thanks Steve for coming and the three enter. They find a large group of Nazi soldiers led by Nazi General Johann Schmidt standing around enormous pillars with three men etched into stone. Schmidt orders his men to take out the prisoners, revealing an injured Bucky and the Howling Commandos, as Schmidt wonders if perhaps giving a sacrifice to the altar will awaken their power. Stroham arrives and warns the general about the intruders and the zombies, but Schmidt says not to worry about them. He had created them to serve the fatherland. Stroheim gets angry, saying that those were his men, loyal soldiers to Germany. They didn't deserve to suffer such horrific fates. Schmidt coldly tells him that there must be necessary sacrifices in order to win the war. Before they can argue further, Caesar and Cap launch a surprise attack on the Nazis as Joseph grabs Bucky. Schmidt manages to even the battle with Cap, which surprises everyone. Schmidt takes off his mask to reveal his deformed red face, announcing himself as the Red Skull, leader of Hydra. As the battle intensifies, a Nazi soldier is sent flying into the pillar. Blood drops into one of the pillarmen and it shakes. An enormous drill comes out of the pillar, killing many Nazis. Nazis in the room as Red Skull orders his men to turn on the UV lights. It is too late, however, as the lights are drenched in blood and vice versa. The blood causes one of the stone men to break free of the pillar as he single-handedly massacres nearly everyone in the room. The man reveals himself to be Wamu, who then places his hands on the two remaining pillar men. Awaken, my masters. The two pillar men awake from the stone as they pose menacingly at the heroes and villains. Red Skull attempts to approach the pillar men, declaring that they now belong to him and they will help him achieve unlimited power, but he is immediately smacked away by cars, which leaves him winded and injured. Cars is amused, noting that the hit should have killed him if he was a normal being. The heroes attempt to fight the pillar men, but it goes very poorly. Wamu is disappointed by the level of opponents, but he's a least impressed with the determination of Steven Caesar. He writes off Joseph as a clown. Nazi reinforcements and the Howling Commandos arrive as ACDC and Cars state that they can't afford to get distracted. They must locate the Red Stone of Asia as soon as possible. This news shocks both Caesar and the Red Skull as one of the pillar men, Wamu, tells the other two to leave. He will stay behind and take care of the pests. The pillar men leave, with the Red Skull departing quietly. Stroheim orders his reinforcements to attack Wamu and asks the Americans to form a temporary alliance with him. Caesar points out that he's Italian actually. Wamu is able to kill nearly all the Nazis as the heroes realize that Wamu is learning as he fights. The more he gets acclimated to his body, the harder the fight becomes. Wamu mocks the humans by stating that he's actually the weakest pillar man. His masters are far above him. Through teamwork between Captain America, Joseph, Caesar and Bucky, they manage to gravely injure Wamu after pumping him with Hamo and leading him into a trap set up by Caesar. During the fight, Caesar manages to create hundreds of hormone infused bubbles around them. Bucky and the commandos blast open a hole in the ceiling with explosives, revealing the morning sun which Caesar uses to reflect sunlight straight into Wamu. Wamu attempts to escape by entering Stroham's body, but Stroham chooses to kill himself along with the pillar man by setting off a grenade. Before he explodes, Stroheim pleads with Cap and Joseph to stop the Pillar Man and save his country from the evil Red Skull and Hydra. The grenades explode, which seemingly kills Stroheim, but Wamu survives. He regenerates and uses his horn to create a massive current of wind that completely destroys the Colosseum. With no other choice, the heroes are forced to evacuate and run for their lives. As a cloak, Wamu leaves the Colosseum. He reunites with his masters, who chastise him for having trouble with these lesser life forms. Wamu apologizes, stating that the next time he fights, he will show no mercy. During their discussion, however, they are approached by a wounded Red Skull, although they view him as a lesser creature and discuss whether or not to consume him. Red Skull manages to strike a deal with them. If they choose to partner with him and Hydra, they will give them as much support and intel as possible in the search for the Red Stone. While Wamu believes this this rat isn't worth their time and ACDC is indifferent, Kars decides that this might be worthwhile to receive this assistance. Red Skull smiles as he welcomes the Pillar Men into Hydra. 
Following this battle, Allied troops recover the stone mask left behind by the Red Skull in the ruins of the Colosseum and send it to Stark Industries so it can be analyzed by Howard Stark. Although Cap is initially reprimanded, he is ultimately pardoned and given the opportunity to join Bucky on the front lines as Captain America. He is also given a new suit and his iconic shield. Meanwhile, Carter gives Joseph and Caesar new orders. They must train and advance their Hamun abilities so they can defeat the Pillarmen. If the Pillarmen are allowed to get their hands on the Red Stone of Asia and the Stone Mask, they'll be a far worse threat than the Nazis ever could be. To this end, Agent Carter welcomes their new training instructor, Hamon Master Lisa Lisa, and Caesar's Master. With her harsh attitude and commanding presence, she prepares to put Caesar and Joseph through the boot camp of hell. We get a montage set to the Captain America theme along with bloody stream of Joseph's training as he gets closer with Caesar while Cap defeats several German soldiers, etc. Meanwhile, Agent Carter finally goes on a date with Joseph, which she had promised. She is surprised to see how well it goes. Carter grows to respect Joseph, but feels conflicted about her growing feelings for both Steve and Joseph. One day, while Cap and Bucky are out on a mission with the Howling Commandos, Lisa Lisa announces that it is time for Joseph and Caesar's final test. They must travel to a nearby mountain, retrieve a wine glass, and bring it back to the camp without spilling a drop. As the two race through the forest and head towards the mountain, the Pillarmen launch a surprise attack on the Allied base. After forming an alliance with the Red Skull, Hydra was busy gathering intel on the location of the Red Stone of Asia, eventually locating Lisa Lisa, the current guardian of the stone, at an Allied base camp in Italy. When Joseph and Caesar arrive at their destination in the mountains, they find not only wine, but cars as well. At the same time, Lisa Lisa, Agent Carter, and the rest of the camp are attacked by ACDC. Cars asks the pair for the location of the Red Stone of Asia, but Joseph blurts out that he doesn't know where it is. Cars attacks the pair as the two common users use everything they can, every tactic, every weapon. During battle, Cars mentions that even if the two of them really don't have the stone, his comrade ACDC definitely will after he finds their camp. Caesar and Joseph start to panic when they realize that another Pillarman is attacking their camp. They have to regroup with their master and Peggy as soon as possible. As the battle intensifies, Joseph manages to trick Cars into believing that he has the stone. Cars focuses his attention on Joseph as he throws the stone down the ravine. Cars jumps into it to grab the stone, with Caesar and Joseph using their combined Hamon abilities on the mountain, causing an avalanche. The pair manage to escape, while the snow covers Cars, presumably killing him. Back at the camp, ACDC is killing all the soldiers in the camp, as Lisa Lisa tells Agent Carter to retreat along with the remaining survivors. Lisa Lisa is able to hold off ACDC, which earns her his respect, but she is unable to fight him at her best, since she is also trying to defend nearby soldiers. While she defends Speedwagon, ACDC nearly kills Carter, but the arrival of Captain America and the Howling Commandos saves her. Steve orders the Commandos to assist in the retreat as he and Lisa Lisa fight ACDC. This battle actually manages to do some damage to ACDC, and he cries hysterically about being hurt. He unveils his ultimate ability, Flame Mode, which causes his body to heat up to 500 degrees Celsius and turns his blood into incredibly hot, deadly projectiles. The entire camp is set ablaze. Lisa Lisa and Captain America are driven to a corner when Joseph and Caesar arrive to even the odds. The combined power and teamwork of Lisa Lisa, Joseph and Caesar result in the defeat of the Pillarman, who explodes from the sheer amount of Hamon in his body. As everyone regroups and tends to the wounded, Steve notices that Peggy is acting odd. He tries to ask if she's alright, but she says that everything is fine. However, both Steve and Joseph agree that she's being really weird. Later, everyone at the camp is getting ready to transfer to another base in Europe. Not only does Steve realize that Peggy's missing, but Lisa Lisa discovers that the Red Stone is missing as well. The heroes split up to find Agent Carter. Joseph eventually discovers Peggy by a railway near a camp. As the train departs in the distance, he discovers to his horror that the brain of ACDC was clinging to the back and mind controlling her. Speaking through Peggy, the brain reveals that he had controlled this woman to steal the Red Stone and deliver it to Hydra agents. Caesar and Steve arrive to see what is happening. Joseph and Caesar harmonize their hormone and strike Peggy, which causes ACDC's connection to break. A final Hamon double punch from Joseph and Steve kills ACDC once and for all. After transferring to the new camp and placing Peggy in the medical ward, Joseph, Steve, Bucky, and Caesar receive new orders. Infiltrate one of Armin Zola's advanced Hydra trains before it reaches Germany, capture Zola himself, and retrieve the Red Stone. The Hamon users and Howling Commandos are sent via airplane to hijack the train as it travels through the snowy mountain. But when when 
they arrive, they find out that this is a trap. Waiting inside the train alongside Iron Man Zola is none other than Wamu. Wamu tries to fight the heroes and easily takes care of the Howling Commandos. During the battle, Bucky tries to set up numerous explosives on the train, but he's discovered. Wamu pierces through Bucky with his horn as the Pillar Man throws him off the train, seemingly killing him. Cap and Joseph are enraged and launch at Wamu, but he's still too much for them. Realizing they will die if they don't act fast, Caesar chooses to sacrifice himself to save his friends. He infuses Hamon into Bucky's explosives during the battle and yells at Captain America and Joseph to leave as he holds off Wamu. Joseph tells Caesar to stop, but it's too late. Cap grabs Joseph and Zola to jump off the train. Caesar activates the Hamon infused bombs, blasting the train into smithereens, killing himself and Wamu in the process. Steve and Joseph mourn the loss of their best friends, as Zola laughs triumphantly. He taunts the heroes, telling them their friends died for nothing. The Red Stone was on a different train that should be arriving at Germany now. Joseph punches Zola unconscious, and the two return to the base. Joseph and Steve are deeply affected by the loss of their friends, but Peggy encourages them to use this sorrow as motivation to end Hydra and the Pillar Men once and for all. After expecting intel from Zola, he reveals the location of the Hydra headquarters. Not only that, one of the Pillar Men cars managed to survive. Joseph and Steve prepare their final mission, defeat Hydra and the last remaining Pillar Man before the power of the Redstone of Asia is unleashed upon the world. Realizing they don't have much time left, Joseph and Steve apologize to each other for all the harsh words they said to each other in the past, especially when it came to Peggy. As they affirm their friendship, Howard Stark and Speedwagon arrive to outfit the Allied soldiers with portable UV light machines for their final battle. They wish the heroes luck as Peggy asks Steve and Joseph to come back alive. She promises to take them out dancing when they return, as Joseph teases Steve that he'll be the one dancing with her first. The two lead the army to storm through the gates of the Hydra HQ, defeating the many Hydra soldiers, vampires and zombies inside. Joseph and Steve head to the central chambers deep within the castle to find Red Skull. When the pair break through the large doors, they discover an enormous ceremonial room where Red Skull and several Hydra soldiers are stationed. Standing in the middle of the altar is none other other than Cars, the final Pillar Man. Red Skull gloats to Joseph and Captain America that they are too late. Cars is in possession of the Stone Mask and the Red Stone. There is nothing left standing between him and perfection. Joseph and Steve rush to stop Cars, but they are halted by Red Skull and his troops. Cars puts on the Stone Mask, with the Red Stone placed inside as a bright light engulfs him. Ultimate Cars is born. Cars boasts about his new power as the Howling Commandos and several Allied soldiers appear using their portable UV lights to kill him, but the lights have no effect. Carr says that he's no longer afraid of the sun as he finally tamed it. He gives the stone mask with the red stone to Red Skull. He has no more use for it. The Red Skull taunts the heroes, proclaiming that the world is now over and the arrival of the ultimate life form. Ah, oh, 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 you pathetic fools. Don't you understand? He is invincible. He has no weakness. Not even Ripple will work on him. He's immortal, unkillable, unmatched. This is the birth of the perfect life form, the ultimate being, Cars. Cars tests out his new abilities against the allied troops, turning his hands into vampiric squirrels to tear them apart. Joseph tells Cars that they only have one last move left. Cap asks him what that last move is. Joseph turns around and yells, Run away! Joseph runs away as Steve runs after him call him a coward and take him back every nice thing he said about him. Red Skull laughs at the cowardice of those so-called heroes until he's finally punched across the jaw by Joseph, taking the stone mask with the Red Stone of Asia from his hands. Red Skull stands back and watches in horror as Joseph and Steve board his massive aircraft bomber, the Valkyrie. Enraged, Red Skull dashes to them, getting on board just before taking off. Amused at Joseph's attempt to escape his fate, Ultimate Cars grows a pair of enormous eagle wings and flies off in pursuit of the Valkyrie. Steve asks Joseph what the hell he's going to do now. Joseph says that he's just winging. The Red Skull appears, demanding Captain America gives him back the stone mask. 
Steve tells Joseph to keep flying the plane, and he goes to fight Red Skull. The Red Skull and Cap fight. Joseph sees cars catch up to him and latch onto the plane, spinning the plane around to shake him off. There's enough explosives in the plane to kill them all. During the chaos, Steve drops his shield and the mask. The Red Skull manages to grab the mask and laughs maniacally, saying that it is now time for him to reject his humanity and become the ultimate being. As he places the mask on his face, Joseph grabs Cap's shield and charges charges it with Hamon, throwing it over to Steve and yelling at him to catch it. Captain America catches the shield and immediately hurls it back towards Red Skull's face. The Hamon charged shield cracks the mask in the middle. Red Skull screams in pain as the stone mask flashes brightly. When the light dissipates, Red Skull is nowhere to be found. All that remained was the shattered remains of the stone mask and the Red Stone of Asia. Steve looks at where the Red Skull stood once and grabs the stone, putting it in his pocket. A loud noise echoes across the ship. The the hole is pierced open and Ultimate Cars enters the plane. Car smirks as he tells the pair that he's tired of this game of cat and mouse. It's time for them to die. Steve goes into attack but there's nothing he can do. No matter how many times Cars beats him down however, Captain America always finds the strength to stand back up. Joseph realizes that Steve can't hold on a lot longer, as he looks at the chain attached to his pocket, with a locket at the end of it. Inside, there's a picture of Peggy. Joseph grits his teeth as he realizes what he has to do. Joseph suddenly steers the ship upwards as it flies off beyond the mountains. Cars asks Joseph what the hell he thinks he's doing, and Joseph chuckles, before smashing his fist against the ship's controls, destroying it. The ship's alarms go off, as Joseph asks Cars if he thinks he's strong enough to handle several tons of explosive missiles going off at once. Cars chuckles, calling Joseph a fool as he says that he can easily escape the plane before it erupts in flames. Just as Cars grows his wings and begins to bid farewell to Joseph, he is immediately struck by something in the back, Captain America throwing his shield with all his might while Cars was distracted. The shield nearly splits in half as it lodges itself deep into the wall of the plane. Cars struggles to get himself free in order to escape the plane. Steve brings Joseph in to a hug, thanking him for being his friend after all these years. But the moment is cut short when Steve whispers into Joseph's ears that he shouldn't keep a lady waiting. Before Joseph can ask what he means by that, a parachute is clipped to the back of Joseph as Steve opens the side of the plane and throws him off. Steve gets in the pilot's seat, with tears streaming from his eyes. He looks back at Cars, telling him that when he gets to hell, make sure to tell everyone that Captain America sent him there. Joseph cries out Steven's name as Cars curses Captain America. The plane explodes in a massive fireball. The force of the blast, so intense, it shot Cars beyond the atmosphere and straight into space. His body turns to stone in an attempt to preserve his life as he drifts onward into the cold depths of space. Steve's body falls straight into the ocean below, sinking deep into the water, as a bright light emanates from Steve's pocket that covers him completely. Steve appears to still be breathing before he's covered in ice. Several weeks pass as the Allies go on to defeat both Hydra and the Axis powers. However, it came at a great cost, including Bucky, Caesar, Joseph, and Steve. All they were able to find was the wreckage of a plane and Captain America's shield. They never find Joseph and Steve's body. During the funeral, for all of these fallen heroes on the outskirts of New York City, many people come to mourn their loss. However, it is during the final funeral service that a loud, pompous man asks everyone why they are at a funeral of all places. They turn around and see Joseph Joestar in the flesh. Joseph reveals that he was saved by Steve before the plane exploded. He then spent the next few weeks recovering in a hospital in Norway, before backpacking across Europe and finding his way to New York. Peggy runs to hug Joseph. Joseph hugs her tightly, saying Steve should have been the one to live, not him. The scene transitions to several different moments in time. After receiving medals from the US, Joseph is personally handed Captain America's shield, as she believes that he's the one who should honor Steve's memory. Joseph and Peggy have their dance, followed by them getting married and later having a daughter named Holly. Lisa Lisa reveals himself to be Joseph's long lost mother as she reintegrates herself into the Joestar family. Speedwagon, Howard Stark, Peggy Carter, and Joseph Joestar go on to become founding members of S.H.I.E.L.D. Joseph, Peggy, and Holly are in the hospital room when Arena passes away due to old age. An older Joseph, Peggy, and Holly are present during their final moments. Scene transitions back to Steve, Caesar, and Bucky's graves for a short montage showing the Joestar family visiting once a year to bring flowers. This grave scene eventually culminates 
culminates in 1987, as a middle-aged Joseph Joestar and Peggy leave behind several bouquet of flowers. Peggy asks him if he has everything ready for the long plane ride to Japan, and Joseph says that he hates getting on planes, but he'll do it if it means seeing their darling daughter Holly. Besides, based on their phone call, it sounds like their grandson has been a handful lately, and he'll need to teach him a lesson. As the couple leave the graveyard, Joseph pulls out a photograph from his pocket as he looks at it anxiously. In the post credit scene, we see a coffin sitting in the bottom of the ocean. A giant hook pulls the coffin from the ocean into a fishing ship near the Canary Islands, off in the coast of Africa. The crew investigates, as one of the fishermen believes that it might have been a lucky break. Maybe there's untold treasure within. Several men start to pry the coffin open with crowbars. As the fishermen open the coffin, a menacing sound emanates from the coffin, followed by several screams as the scene cuts to black. In the second post credit scene, the statue of Cars is seen floating in space as he is suddenly pulled into it by a tractor beam by an unidentified spaceship. A blue-skinned alien with a fin on his head smiles. One of his crewmen asks Captain Yondu what they should do with this thing. Yondu says that he knows a pretentious asshole who would love to buy a piece of junk like this. Thank you for watching guys, this video was a long time coming. I don't usually do crossovers, and especially not non-Dragon Ball stuff, but JoJo is a very special series, so it was worth exploring. I have to give a thank you to my Patreons, and remember, I'm focusing more on Patreon than on channel members, so if you wanna get more goodies, be sure to head over to Patreon. With that out of the way, thank you to Sonic is the Best, Hanno Rowan, Nuka Draco, The Baked Potato, All Might, Midnight Combatant, The Sacred Saiyan, Feel Jack here, Pizza Hut Kitman, Orlando Castellano, Sir Justice, The Real Samuel Randall, Bartek, Dreadpool, and Ethan Legion. Thank you guys for your constant support. Once again, let me know in the comments what you thought of the video. And until we meet again, see ya!